Hi readers, it's Mrs. Mayer, back today for our final inference lesson. So for the past two weeks, we have been reviewing how good readers can make an inference about what they read. Uh, last week, we just we used some riddle poems and we used the clues from the story to figure out what the poem was about. Since they were so fun and you guys were such good detectives, we're gonna do our final inference practice with another riddle poem. Last week, they were animal poems, but this week it could be anything. So they can be a little bit more tricky. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do a practice together so that we can um, share or practice using the clues. Here is our um, anchor charts like we had before, how an inference is figuring something else that wasn't completely explained in the story. And we are again going to choose um, a riddle from the um, When Riddles Come Rumbling book. And here is our poem. So you may read this with me as I begin to read this new poem today. And remember, we're going to be thinking about clues that tell us what this poem is about. I boom, I pop, I stay up late, my neon colors decorate with bold design and brilliant flair, a masterpiece I make of air. So as we think about this poem, we need to find some clues, some words the author chooses to use that we can use to make an inference about what this poem is about. When I start at the beginning of this poem, immediately I hear some noise words, right? We hear boom and pop. And I think, hmm, what makes a boom and pop sound? Then I see the words stay up late. When I stay up late, it's nighttime. So I'm thinking boom and pop and it's at nighttime. We hear things like neon colors or decorate with bold design and brilliant flair and that it's in the air. Hmm. So I've got a design of colors in the air at night that makes a boom and a pop. Hmm. If I have all of these clues, I'm thinking that it could be some fireworks. So my inference statement would be, I infer it is fireworks because it makes a boom and a pop noise is neon in bold designs and is in the air. I could also add that it was at night, right? So now we're just like last week, we're gonna use the author's poem with the illustration to see if we're right. Here is the picture of the poem and in the outside edge of the picture, we can see they are fireworks, looks like. Um, and then again, remember, the author uses the letters in the poem to give us a clue to tell us if we're right or not. So the letters around the edge are O, R, K, R, E, F, S, W, and I. If we take those letters and rearrange them, then they spell fireworks. So we are correct. Excellent work, boys and girls. So hopefully you came up with the word fireworks as well. This week in your seesaw, I'm going to share another poem. This time it is not an animal. So see if you can use your good inferencing skills to figure out what it is. Just like last week, I will post the picture of the real poem on Friday so you can see if you're right. Good luck.